So now this client that I'm not clicking with, now I have not only more work to do on him, but it's for fucking free. <laughs> so, and yeah. you don't like to do the fucking tattoo. You just signed yourself exactly. up for it. He's like, man, nobody will do this tattoo I want of this tribal dragon with a mustache. I'm like, I got you. I got you, fam. <laughs> oh, man, it's so fucking awesome to hear these stories because I'm like, Thank-. see, this is the shit that, you know, you put someone on a pedestal right. when you hear a story like that and you're like, thank God I'm fucking, I can totally relate to that because I've done that. Brothers and sisters, we can't thank you enough for all your love, your support, and your faithfulness. It's been brought to my attention. If you really want to do something to bless us, to thank us, apparently simply hitting the like button on YouTube would be more impactful than what I ever knew, let alone subscribing to us on YouTube if you're not already. And then over on Spotify and Apple, please leave us a review. All of your listening and your comments to us mean the world to us. Um, And do us a favor and just hit like on YouTube and leave us reviews on Spotify and Apple. And we're going to continue to serve you with our whole heart. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Hip here, coming to you again with this, another episode of the Tattoo Guardians podcast. And fuck Matt, it's just me and Josh. It's it's the <laughs> Josh and Hip show today. Because yeah, it's a Josh and Hip show. What's up? <laughs> right, and it's an important one because today we're talking about boundaries. So that's why Matt's not here. Fuck him. We set our own boundaries, and it's up <laughs> to us to hold integrity with ourselves and with our audience for fucking right. not to have Matt here. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm. I'm I posted on Facebook the other day, I'm 48 years old and I'm just finally deciding to get my driver's license. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of things that should have happened by being 48. And one of them is really kind of understanding boundaries, like letting my clients not take advantage of me, understanding that the boundaries I need to give to my clients, you know what I mean? What about you? Is that something that you were just kind of always natural at? Or? <laughs> uh, no. And it's still <laughs> like, you know, it always, anytime we talk about shit like this, it's so applicable to tattooing. And it always reminds me of like, um, mastery is lifelong. You just don't get coin. You know, people may coin you the term of master, but when they get to know you, you're like, right. oh, that just means you're a really fucking good apprentice that's been apprenticing fucking this whole time because like i you know there's um in recovery there's this thing that basically asks like how you humbly come to the universe your higher power whatever it may be to uh have like things removed or things gained like knowledge of fucking boundaries and with me it's always pain i i will and it, when I first started hearing this word boundaries and, and kind of get grasping like what it meant, I thought that like, you know, for example, let's say you smoke weed and I come to your house, you know, I'm in recovery, so you shouldn't smoke weed when I come to your house. And it's like, no, you don't set boundaries for other people. You set them for yourselves. And when people cross those boundaries, you can then back off or um, remind them that like, Hey, I, that really ain't my bag. Like, this is how I operate. And a lot of times it's happened like that with, with clients, you know, trying to run the show. And it's like the fucking Absolutely. people pleaser in me will want to abide. And I just want people to like me. But even before, you know, it's, it's funny. I'll always want you to like me before I like myself. Man, I, I so, so get that because that's exactly what my entire life has been, you know. So there's been so many times that I've, I'm very aware that a client is taking advantage of me. You know what I mean? Um, I'll even apologize to them. They'll cancel on me two or three times, right? And then like I'll end up being like, hey, sorry for the weird scheduling, but let's try to get you back <laughs> in when it's like clearly not even on me at all. You know what I mean? Um You know, and it's like, I'll see somebody else that's really good at dealing with their clients, with their boundaries. And I'm just, when I hear it, I'm like, man, what if he doesn't, what if they don't like you? It's like, you know what? Not everybody has to like you. And I think ultimately that's what's been a big thing for me to realize. Like I'm such a people pleaser, but just like you, the one person I'm not trying to please is myself. You know, and it's like, fuck, I'm 48. Like, why am I just now dealing with this? <laughs> so, 
I, that's why that's, that's kind of why I thought this might be a good topic because I am noticing the more we record episodes and get feedback, the more I realized how similar we we tend to be as artists. You know what I mean? Man, and you know it's um it's uh it, it is fitting because it was kind of a revelation for me to even just point that out just now that like, how come I'm more concerned about taking care of you first and me last? And it always mm-hmm. seems to be the scenario. Well, okay. Well, what's a, what's the solution for that boundaries. So it kind of goes fucking hand in hand. And, you know, um, I think to some extent we've kind of done it, but I just feel that like, you know, our awareness is picking up on it more and, and how more important that it is. Um, yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's very fitting and it is proper and it is important to know that like, yeah, other people do this too. It just hasn't been me. I can remember like, you know, I always would ask wanting to see the ugly foot and people that I looked up to and then finding out that like, oh, I'm on the right path because if I hear your struggles, then I know that like it's obtainable. It's not just me. And anytime I can get out of that, uh, that, um, uh, what do you call it? Like f- terminally, what's it called, Mike? Terminally hip, fatally cool or some shit? Yeah. Yeah, terminally hip and fatally cool. Like I'm different. Once I can focus okay. on the similarities, right. then I'm like, oh, okay, I am on the right path. I don't feel bad now, you know? Oh, you mean to tell me that y- okay. you too have done a tattoo that has healed like shit and everything wasn't flawless? Cool. Then I'm doing it right, I guess, you know, or... Yeah. right right yeah it's like you have to get we've talked about permission in the past and it's like you know i'll get permission from the weirdest places like you know a tattoo artist that's not even close to the level that i'm at uh or somebody that's way beyond me it doesn't really matter the guy at the grocery store somehow something this somebody else does gives me permission to realize like what i'm doing is okay you know and I've talked about it in the past, but I'm, I'm guessing there's some sort of trauma that I should probably be dealing with, you know. And I just, I never really put a lot of thought or weight into that. I think I just am like always moving, just like be better, get better, be the best tattoo artist you can be, be the best painter you can be. And like all that shit that keeps you up at night, just bury it deep down inside because that's super healthy. <laughs> well, I mean, you're supposed to be a man, right? right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, what about you, Mike? Since you, you know, is that something that you've dealt with boundaries as well? Is that a thing for you? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was always described to yeah, me it, that like boundaries aren't for the other person or whatever the situation. Like, it, it's always basically pointing back to me, like putting a mirror up in front of my face. Okay. If I'm not the problem, there is no solution. Like, if I have a resentment toward you yeah. for wearing those headphones, am I going to, like, act outwardly and, like, tell you all the reasons why the, those headphones fucking aren't good, they don't look good, they don't fucking sound good, like, or am I going to take it on right. me to be like, that's my problem, why the fuck do I have that problem? Maybe you should put up a boundary. Well, now I'm super sensitive about my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to pick, you know, something personal, like, because it does, it gets personal no, and, like those boundaries are for me, like not you. Some, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes boundaries, like I'll even have to set, you know, yeah, we, and, and I feel that like the way we've been talking about it is like, you know, I set boundaries. So when other people cross them, I, it's on me to honor that boundary, not them, but also like, dude, the way up here, um, I was having a one-on-one with one of our apprentices. He's actually in the room watching it for the first time. So that's pretty cool. Shout out to DeVille. He's sitting over by uh little Mike and he, you know, has noticed that since Zach's died, he'll never get a chance to ask him how he shaded that way or why, why did he choose that needle or like, what's that hand movement you're doing? Um, so he's put a boundary up with himself to like step out of his fear 
um, of asking or being a burden, you know, because we all deal with that. I don't want to bother someone. And, you know, because I could fucking die tomorrow. And now he's just if he wouldn't have set that boundary up, he never would have asked me the questions he was going to ask me. So he's seeing like, OK, I got to put a boundary up for myself to like when I start knowing that I'm in my head dealing with this fear. And I know we all can relate to it. I do totally can. It's like now he has to honor his own boundary against himself and be like, step through the fucking fear. Yeah, absolutely. That's an interesting way to look at it. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't even know where to start. You know what I mean? Like, other than just kind of admitting I need to work on on my boundaries. Like, you know, like I I purposely built like a drawing room that's odd. To me, it's very obvious that you're not supposed to be back there. It's just for artists. It seems very obvious to me. But man, so many of my clients will just like follow me back there. <laughs> you know, they got their food. They brought, they brought some Wendy's in. They'll just follow me back there and just watch over my shoulder, you know? And I'll, I'll, every once in a while, one of them will be like, you seem like you're in a bad mood today. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I'm trying to just concentrate and not have you watch every move I make as I make your stencil, you know? So then I feel like I have to rush it as well. I don't know if you feel like that, but when they're standing right over my shoulders man. like that, I feel like I have to be in this big <clears throat> hurry. And then again, I start apologizing. Like, like they're early or late. And I'm, again, here, here's me apologizing because all I can think about is I need to spend the next six to eight hours with this person. I don't want to feel really uncomfortable. I don't, you know what I mean? So I do this weird thing where like, I just try to almost adapt myself to like whatever I think would fit with them the best. You know what I mean? Like I'll even sometimes talk a little different or like, like tone, like dumb myself down even, which sounds horrible to say, but for particular people, I've definitely done that before just to try to make it as smooth as possible, you know? And I, I get that. I, I uh, Cause I understand as well, like those, those fucking clients that are hanging over and it does, it puts an amount of pressure on you. And ultimately we need our own space to be able to, uh, to yeah. get ready for the tattoo and the process. And like, that's what the, the new shop that we're, that we're building, um, one. And of course this is, this is where we fuck up. Cause we need to say, you know, someone walks in with Wendy's and they want to fucking walk back in the, in the room, the artist room, um, I oftentimes think people can read my mind and when they can't, now I'm pissed at them, which falls under it's absolutely our responsibility to be like, Hey, you got some fucking Wendy's you're trying to eat. Okay. Check it. Um, go ahead and have a seat here and finish your meal. I'm going to finish getting everything ready. Um, and then I'll come back out, um, when we're ready to, to start this. So just make yourself comfortable here, you know, and then now we've set the boundary. Now they're aware of it. Now, if they choose to break it, which it's happened before. So now it's like, I don't, do we got to turn it up just a notch? Probably so. And, and reinforce that there's, um, there was a, a TBM student that like, um, you know, he had Michel, uh, Michel, uh, mental issues that he was dealing with during one of the classes. And, and, you know, he's bipolar. And what he does is like when his client comes in and they talk about like their struggles or some fucking horrible thing they've just experienced, he takes that on and like, yeah. then it starts fucking with him mentally and, you know, enough clients throughout the day or days or weeks, it puts him in a fucked up spot and he's already got his own shit he's dealing with. And, you know, I told him, I was like, look, I'm going to call DM me and I'll call you after, after the, the meeting or after TBM. And I did, and I talked to him for about an hour and a half and we talked about boundaries. And I was like, there's nothing wrong with the email you send out to your clients that, you know, you're going to work with letting them know that like, Hey, I have this particular mental illness. Um, and I am very compassionate and empathetic towards people. Um, so, you know, just to be mindful of that. Um, and, I would like to to inform you on the front end that like I tend to take on people's stuff, you know, not to say that like you can't be vulnerable with me and and, and just speak normal. And if you're struggling, that's cool. I get it. But like just be mindful of that because I don't want to take it on and I want this to be a good a good tattoo session for both of us. You know, I want to enjoy it just like you do, because like you were saying when you um now that, that you didn't 
you didn't honor your own boundary that they were not cognizant of because we didn't tell them. Now you got to spend the next six to eight hours with them and you're already assassinating them in your head. You're like, you stupid motherfucker. You should have known that this was an artist room, but you didn't fucking communicate right, it. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I see. And that goes back to like the power of taking care of everything on the front end. Like that, that was something when, when, you know, a year or so ago when you said that for the first time, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like, is it, is it, is it, is it really that simple? It, it really is, you know? You know, obviously your pricing, you know, your aftercare, you know, how long you have to wait in between sessions. Like, again, I just like you, I just kind of assumed everybody either a reads my mind (laughs) or they all know the same shit that I know from 33 years of tattoo. Right. You know, like, of course, this, of course, this guy knows not to put butter on his tattoo. (laughs) Well, guess what? He fucking put butter on his tattoo. You know, or chapstick or fucking Carmex. <laughs> and, you know, you know so. <laughs> when you see those fucking signs like the um, the fucking electric sockets will say, like, don't stick forks in here. You're like, well, duh, I know that. But obviously there's a sign there for a reason because someone <laughs> stuck a fork oh, in it. Somebody. That's insane, right? Yeah, it's constantly like that. I don't know. So, yeah, so it's it's been interesting working on boundaries, especially since I'm such a people pleaser, you know. Um, whether it's, whether it's the people that I work directly with, uh, usually it's my time. I'm extraordinarily busy, especially right now. And people will really try to like one, I remember one person was like, oh, we're all busy, but I'm like actually scheduling my own life, like minute to minute, like right now it won't, it won't stay this way, but this month is just really crazy. And, uh, well, I'm just going to come over to the house for like a little bit to do this. And it's like, Again, I, I'm, I'm like apologizing to them. So I'm, wor- I'm really working on being able to say like, you know, on the front end, this is where I'm at with my schedule right now. We can totally hook up on this date, but right now this is not going to work. And if they don't like it or they don't like me, then it's okay. Yeah. It's, and I think that's, that's ultimately where I need to surrender. Like we talked about, you know. It- The last episode. And that's a great fucking distinction of knowing like what you're responsible for the harm, you know, because we cause harm all the time, ultimately. Like that's why I'm always having to look at it. But it's important too to know like what harm is my, is something that I need to own up to and and confess and apologize for versus like if someone just doesn't like the fact that I'm sorry that, you know, I didn't purposely make my entire day busy, so I didn't have time for you because I've been looking forward at like right. having this conversation and ha ha ha, I don't have time for you. It's nothing like that. But, you know, I not at all. I, I'm not much, but I'm all I think about. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us are the same way, you know, because we're self-centered from in time to time. I'll fall in this sinkhole that I forgot that I'm not the center of the universe and I'd be acting like I am. So if I get mad at you because you can't schedule me in to fucking come over and kick it, um, and I get mad at that, that absolutely has nothing to do with you. You know, it's all my shit because I'm thinking like, well, am I not important? And I start like self pityville and like projecting my insecurities on the fact that you're fucking sh- shaking and moving and fucking got shit to do, and you just can't fit me in the schedule at this moment. You know. So it's like, right. It, and it, because you're a fucking lover, you're a people pleaser. So now you're apologetic for something that, that you're not even responsible for. And I think, it, you know, for our listeners, like if you fucking didn't know what boundaries were, or you kind of did, or you struggle with it, or you're really fucking good at it. Ultimately, we can continue to grow at it. And I know the first thing of aware, the first part of of growing is like becoming aware of it. And then you'll start noticing like you've been noticing like these places were like, you know, for our listeners, Josh picked the topic out this week and like I can fuck with boundaries. I can learn some more about boundaries. I can get vulnerable and talk about more areas that I'm struggling with when it comes to boundaries. Um, And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a very special guest. Mr. Drumroll, Matt Klimmer. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, shit. thanks. Hey, it's hey. good to finally join the party. My <laughs> God. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah, boundaries. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Did he, I come too he, soon? He, yeah, we told him not to come, and he was fired, but yet he shows up, so it's our responsibility now to fucking tell him <laughs> to get the fuck back upstairs. 
Well, I'm just going to start apologizing a whole bunch for some weird reason. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me, guys. And yeah. I can get down on boundaries, too. And I don't know about you all, but for me, oftentimes in life, my boundaries were created and birthed out of some motherfucker crossing one that I didn't know I had. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and so hearing in your Absolutely. guys's language, you know, Josh, I love that you said, man, is it really that simple? It's simple. And oftentimes it is simple, but it doesn't mean it's always easy. Right. And there's a big difference between simple and easy. A lot of times business is simple. Don't mean it's easy. Right. But there's layers and levels to this, at least in my own personal growth and relationship with boundaries, because Josh, like you and all, you know, being a lover and a people pleaser, uh, I feel like I joined late in the game in my as an adult on even learning about boundaries, let alone how to create my own and set them. And so what I've learned, I feel like a lot in just a little bit of time in recent years, once I started setting boundaries and even in TBM, oh, man, we would serve and serve and we still do. Like you've heard my coaching calls will last seven or eight hours, which is unheard of, especially in an industry standard. It's an hour. Right. So uh, but regardless, right. that's OK. But then when hip brings up. And again, whether early on there were some students that joined the program, they knew this is group coaching. They know that we meet on Mondays, but there's a couple that all of a sudden wondered why they didn't have me at their beck and call every day, all day, and would get resentful. And even though I could be like, geez, really? You, you just thought you were going to have me as your like genie in the bottle? Genie in the bottle yeah. and your but I also realized that pointed a direction at me of where I haven't clearly communicated and so this to me exactly. the levels of boundaries is one us knowing them ourselves and they're ever evolving because sometimes today we've created boundaries we didn't used to have but it took one person showing up crossing a line that we didn't think anyone would cross to make us include that in the actual boundaries that we now convey but one is knowing them even though it's an ever can be ever growing two is how to properly communicate and convey that to the world you know, and that's why when you bring up on the front end and there's more than one way to communicate and convey boundaries. Like when we bring people in aisle nine, we would be when I take people on a tour so clear about who we are and what we offer, what to expect here today. And when we get so clear on that, it almost can rule out what not to expect. If I take people on a tour and say, hey, you guys can feel free to put your things here, your coats here or here. You can feel free to sit here or here. And then we're going to be right with you. I'm guiding and directing them on what is possible. And so since I didn't point over here and say behind the counter and say, and you can sit back here. Most times it goes without saying if you're clear on the front end on what we do offer, what we do provide, what you're welcome to do, most people will do that. You know, it's it's rare that someone will. But there is but always, always going to be that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and what does this yeah. call for? I, I, Having to communicate it right in the moment when it happens and somehow bypass awkwardness or anger or offense. I can't believe this motherfucker did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I've got to try and communicate it and not show offense. That's where the dance gets even more challenging. But back to knowing who you are, the more we can know who we are and just own our, ourselves and be comfortable in our own skin, the harder it's going to be for someone else to make us uncomfortable in our own house. Right. But I'm sorry, Josh, I cut you off. You're going to interject. Oh, it's just, it just made me think of a, of a time when I, I had a client who literally like when he was waiting for me to make my stencil, he was like opening my closet in my room and like, <laughs> you know, literally like literally opening drawers and stuff, you know, and I, I remember not saying anything. And it's like looking back, it's like there's that's a real boundary issue right there, mm -hmm. you know. So just kind of like just reflecting on as I'm as I'm taking it on and, and, and like going to get past yeah. this and like actually have some real boundaries yeah. just the, the times that i've just been like damn yeah that's crazy. right yeah you just start and i'm sure we all have those oh, stories yeah. you, know? you just start reaching in his pockets and pulling out his wallet and looking through it and shit <laughs> yeah you, you know yeah. you talk about how like you, you fucking would start apologizing i went a step further right. and i know i've shared this before but this is had to deal with boundaries but not only did i apologize i then gave them a free t-shirt Yep, it did. Story, yes, yes. And I, I it wasn't free 
It was free, free for them. It yeah. wasn't free for me. I right. had to pay you for it. <laughs> Yo, I own shit. Right. And for somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah. I, re- I remember working at a shop. Um, the boss was like super strict. And I had told someone, I remember the tattoo was, uh, I think, oh, it's $150. And then I, so I did the tattoo and then they gave me $50. And I was like, oh, it's 150 And they're like, oh, I thought you said 50 Now, they could have been, you know, trying something or they could have heard me wrong. I, I tend to talk fast sometimes. But the same thing, like instead of like, you know, even then I was like, I don't want this client not to like me. So I paid my percentage out of my own pocket. Like I gave the 50 to them, to the boss, plus whatever else out of my own pocket. So I basically paid to tattoo this yeah. person. Now, this was like tw- 20 something years mm-hmm. ago. And I definitely am past that now. <laughs> you know, don't, everybody's gonna be like, oh shit, I'm booking with Josh and telling him he said that's 50 right. bucks. Uh, but I mean, that's just insane to think about that I was, I, yeah. to me, I looked at it as I'm a problem solver. Yeah. That's not, that's not what I was doing. Yeah. And I would have said, man, I just blessed them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cowardly, yes. like dismissing yeah. and, th- and that would be giving my power yeah. away. And initially, Josh, what you're saying is as you've grown, you've taken, you, you're, you're walking in more power. You keep more of your power these days. But well, those are the great lessons that teach us also to communicate clearly on the front end. Right. The pain gets great enough. Yes. Which we've seen fucking... have you so many fucking times. Like that story Josh just broke down. Like we could count more than on my hand so many times that's happened with you and I in our career. Man. You know, half the things we teach today is because of how we fucking did it so wrong <laughs> at one point, you know. And learned the hard way, hoping to save others for having to learn it the hard way. And yeah. it's always funny to me, like, yeah. when Josh brings up, like, man, I didn't, you know, like, he just said, like, I didn't think it was that simple, how you talk on the front end, you yeah. know? And, like, it's just when I look, it, it's funny because, like, one, I got a lot of work to do. I'm my worst critic. But when I hear someone be like, man, hip's thorough mm-hmm. and he explains shit on the front end. And I'm thinking like, dude, you don't even know mm-hmm. how I became that way. Like That's it right. took so much yeah. failure yeah. and fucking leaving gray area, open loops that you didn't even know about uh, things that you just thought were assumed. Mm-hmm. Then they get there and you realize it wasn't assumed. Then they might even tell you that they're thinking otherwise and you didn't have the nuts to clear it. Then <laughs> now you're sitting down tattooing with bricks on your shoulder and beads of sweat on your forehead, sweating about the conversation when you do go to the counter, you know, just riddled. And so it was yeah. costing you way more than money, costing you your peace, trying to cost your serenity. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why these, are pivotal breakthrough moments for all of us to have breakthrough in this area. Because once you have breakthrough, you know, then there's you get to places of no returning, like Josh, that's no longer an issue in his life today. And like you, people accuse you of being so well on the front end, communicate so thorough, and you've earned that. You know, but it, you're right. It came from all the years of not a fucking big cost. And yeah. it's the, you know, those, those feelings don't feel good. You know, mm-hmm. when you're having to pay for your fucking dude that you just tattooed, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> either they were trying to get one over on you or you spoke too fast. Yeah. That feeling will always be with you. And it's like, I don't know about you, Josh, but like things like that, mm-hmm. 20 years down the road, I'll be trying to go to sleep one night and it'll be like, Hey, you remember that one time you fucking, hoed yourself out and covered the tattoo because you were too much of a pussy to say something and now I'm awake the rest of the night beating myself up yeah, about absolutely. it. Uh, you're like, man, I thought I was more I, woke. I thought I'd healed over this shit, but that motherfucker. Uh, yeah, it's like it never goes away. You're like, just I'm going to get some good sleep and say, remember that one time? Yeah. I've even, I've literally even like just to make myself feel more comfortable with the client that I had, like Let's say it's a back piece, right? So I'm like, okay, this is going to be a long process. I need to feel comfortable with this client. Like, I'll, I have literally, and this is so embarrassing. I've been like, you know, you're getting a lot of work from me. So uh, that that tattoo that you talked about earlier, and usually it's like something I'm not into at all. <laughs> uh, when your back when your back piece is done, I'm just going to do it for free for you because that sounds really fun. <laughs> I really want to do it. Yeah. Gonna, you know, and that's that future Josh shit that I talked about in the very beginning yeah, of the podcast yeah. and like future Josh yeah. come, that problems come way oh, faster. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> uh, 
So now this client that I'm not clicking with, now I have not only more work to do on him, but it's for fucking free. <laughs> so, and yeah. you don't like to do the fucking tattoo. You just signed yourself exactly. up for it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, man, nobody will do this tattoo I want of this tribal dragon with a mustache. I'm like, I got you. I got you, fam. <laughs> oh, man, it's so fucking awesome to hear these stories because I'm like, Thank-. see, this is the shit that, you know, you put someone on a pedestal right. when you hear a story like that and you're like thank god i'm fucking i can totally relate to that because i've done that yeah 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 Yeah. we all can Uh, you know and like clear communication is knowing who you are how you operate clearly conveying that on the front end what we offer what we don't what to expect what not to boundaries is saying if you need something from me i take calls whatever i I got office hours open to my clients Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., whatever. I'm allowed to create those boundaries with my clients. Now, I don't have those hours, but every man that has boundaries, every coach, every businessman, every tattoo, anyone that has boundaries has those in. And what you're telling the client, that way someone, because how many of us will get messages on Messenger, DMs, Instagram, whatever. Any time of the day. Any time of the day. And if we don't respond within their perceived timing that's going to be cool with them, right? But if they're messaging on you on a day where you don't ever fuck with messages, but they don't know that, that's another way of set boundaries and expectations with your clients, who you are and how you operate. And if you do message me on a week, if I said I only answer messages Monday through Thursday, don't message me Friday night and expect to hear from me until next Monday. But that's on me to create that boundary and tell my people, even if it's with my own students, when they can hit me up, when they can't. And what they can expect from me, when, what they can't. And this creates peace and honor and respect on the front end simply because it's created and it's clearly communicated. Yep. Now they can put some respect on it because you know. And you know well enough to tell the rest of the world. That's where it points back to us. And being able to do that in every area of our life is when it does work and when it does become simple. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I see, I go to these like tattoo forums on Facebook. So I, we're definitely not alone. Like I see this a lot. I see people who are like, look at this text I got. And somebody will write them at like 5, 5 a.m. And I realize there's different time zones, but at 5 a.m., even a three hour difference, you're really writing somebody very, very late or early in the morning. And then the, like 15 minutes later, like, hello, you know, oh, you're not going to answer me. Oh, how professional. I'm going to tell everybody how you're... You're an asshole, yeah, right. you know, and the guy's like, I was sleeping. Sure. Right. <laughs> I was literally sleeping, right. you know, so, man. Mm-hmm. So how, how let, let's, Matt, let's just say, hypothetically, let's say that happened to you. Mm-hmm. How would you, how would you handle that? Knowing that you've, you've worked on your boundaries better. What would you, what would you say? Would you just kind of say like your office hours? Would you just kind of say, you know, you're sleeping? Like, cause I see sometimes people come off as like a real asshole mm-hmm. and maybe that's needed sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Yeah, it is tough. It's tough. Now, I'm always one that chooses love and tries to give people room even when they're shitty w- with me. Uh, and usually if right. people get shitty with me, it's from them not getting the communication they expected. Uh, and I'm still guilty of a lot of that. Hence, right now I have over a thousand... Uh, I have 1,131 unread text messages on my phone right now. So, right. So even though I teach what I teach, guys, at every level, I still ain't got this shit mastered. Why am I a man operating business giving anyone advice? And I've got over 1,000 unread messages, right? Yeah. Um, but at every level, it comes with that. So this is an example of a... This, that right there is an example of a boundary I waited too long to set. I now have it in place, meaning like, you know, back in the days where you could get at me through any stream, you want to hit me up on MySpace, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, here's my cell number, hit me up, you know, now you see artists that are funneling it and so many people be like, no DMs, email me, no whatever, right? But back in the day, um, you know, so many people got my number. Um, and still use it, but that's still on me to be the solution to that. But I just so happen to know, Josh, in the meantime, out of those thousand people, 
there's probably 400 of them that hate my guts right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when I finally get to a message, because I'll read message one where they're singing that my praises and really love me and my work and really want to work with me. Message two, they're checking back in to make sure I got message one. <laughs> message three, they're touching base again. <clears throat> message four, what the fuck, man? I guess my money no good for you. Message five, fuck you, ho. You motherfucker, <laughs> I better not catch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm reading them all watching this person have an emotional roller coaster and it's the first time I've, I'm reading all five of them at once and it's been over the course of five months and I can't tell you how many times that happened so immediately this is where the dudes who don't give a fuck are walking in a level of freedom that I have yet to because there's so many tattoo artists be like fuck them fuck that and go on to the club where I'm laying my head on the pillow at night like oh god they're mad at me fuck you know what I'm saying <laughs> like it bothers me because I care yeah. so usually that's the first thing I communicate to them and I'll acknowledge it. Hey, uh, I've learned enough to know without communication, things go south. I just read all five of your messages. I want to thank you for your kind words on the front end. I also, <laughs> I also want to let you know um, that w w between me, this wasn't personal. Um, but again, I get it. You wouldn't know otherwise because I had never taken the time to acknowledge you, your message or to say so. I'm finally getting around to doing it now. And usually I'll enter a conversation to try and restore it if I want to sometimes those messages they just showed me their true colors and again i didn't owe them nothing right um and right. so it'll show me their true colors but i usually try and choose own my own shit and then convey that have authentic communication see if we can have restoration if they receive anything from me then they can let it go and oftentimes apologize man i was man i was having a bat whatever whatever we'll restore it mend the relationship and actually build to a beautiful piece together then there's other times where i'm like oh dodged a bullet i don't think i want to mess with her at exactly. all <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> You know, so it's yes, situational. I've dodged a lot of bullets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But trying to have your fence knob on low or turned off is always the best. When we're offended, man, we're usually taking out the game. Yep. You know, and even if someone's being shitty with me, like even when other people could, you know, talk shit about me online in the past, you know, my own wife mm -hmm. would stop and want to make sure if any of it's true. Like if Matt needs to fucking own up to any of it. That used to piss me off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but it has taught me a lot. All and so for me not to be so quick to be offended and to look at, like you say, my side of the street and really look at it to clean this deal up and prevent it from ever happening in the future. And man, whatever it usually points to, whatever solutions you guys ever step into being it doesn't it always seem like that communication is always sprinkled or coupled with whatever solution it is like it's usually not detached Absolutely. from communication man you know yeah man the, yeah one of the one of the things that i heard early on that makes a lot more sense to me now was somebody else's opinion of you is none of your business man Absolutely. come on that's a hard one to swallow josh fuck man right? You know what I'm saying? Because they also, I've also heard, if you really want to know a man, ask his family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you really want to know if I'm a man of character, ask my wife and my kids. And, you know, and their opinions may shed some light on who I am. But if we're talking about motherfuckers who don't even know yet, but want to talk shit, like, you know, <coughs> in town to deal yeah. with haters, to take that on, Josh, is what I've had to remind myself of. I don't even know this guy. Like, there's a look, another local shop hater uh, that's been talking shit about us for years. Uh, and recently, I believe, has crossed the line and it's just really hurt. But, Josh, I could not pick this man out of a lineup. Not only do I not know him, mm. we've never met. I've never seen his face. And so it's people like that. Interesting. You know, and we got several of them in our life uh, is weird to me. And that's where I've had to take on. Well, wait a minute. I mean, any of this dude don't know each other. I've never talked. I've never had an encounter. His opinion about me a, is of no consequence, as radio he head says. It's one of my favorite all time radio headlines that your opinion is of no consequence at all. <laughs> you know, so that's number one. <clears throat> number two, the dude don't even know me. He don't even know you, hip. So that doesn't speak to who we are that just tells us something about him 
you know? Yeah. Um, and how did you eloquently you put it, Josh? What, what was the one liner you said? S somebody else's opinion of you is none of your business. Mm -hmm. Ooh. You know, and when you, and so you're saying this person doesn't even know you, but they've formed this opinion of you. And I think that's very similar to where if there's a lack of communication on the front end, it's kind of the same thing. If somebody's not communicating, then you're just kind of left to your own devices to just form whatever opinion you want. Yeah. And we live in this digital world where we get all of these, uh, you know, everything is through text and emails and you can't tell tone, right? Mm -hmm. So like it's even easier to form a negative opinion yeah. because I learned, um, I learned not too long ago that apparently just sending somebody a thumbs up emoji is, is kind of more like, you know, like cool bro, you know, as to where I actually meant it as like, awesome, I got you booked, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I didn't even realize that. I so know. Like somebody dude, out there who was it? Was it your daughter who told right? you or who told you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It was my daughter, yeah. Damn it, Josh. We're showing our yeah. age, boy. <laughs> or, or someone sends you a fucking paragraph yeah. and like you just, hell yeah, I agree with it. And you send them a thumbs up and it's like they fucking Think go Think it is a fuck you. Right. Two yeah. razor blades afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I read somewhere that, so, you know, somebody out there has an opinion of you. That of something that you don't even remember, not even an opinion, a memory. So it's like a real thing yeah. that happened, you know, and it could be a wonderful memory or a negative yeah. memory. And you don't even remember that, but it's affected this person's yeah. life. Like talk about shit keeping you up at night. Yeah. I'm like, man, I wonder that one time when I went to shake that guy's hand, but he came in with a fist bump and I grabbed his fist and shook yeah. it. Man, I should just kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the bump. Oh, shit. Which is why it's so so right, important yeah. to know our part and it's important for them to know their part. <laughs> because, Man, you our know, part's a full-time fucking job. And it's, it, it's equally, you know, I'm saying my part's a full-time job, but yeah. also your part's a full-time job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a so full-time job for just me all worrying the way about around. my part. I ain't, your part ain't my business. Right. Right? Yeah. I could want you to do your part. But, you know, and speaking like what Josh was talking to, if, if fucking, you know, I call you and I'm like, Matt, I'm on my way over to hang out. Um, and you're like, okay, cool. And then fucking Katie has an episode. Now you have to cancel it. Dude, I'm sorry. I'm halfway here though. Mm -hmm. Now, if I get upset with that, that's not your shit at mm -hmm. all. So uh, what what I'm alluding well, to. And it's the why. Because you're allowed to be bummed that yeah, I didn't work you out. You didn't cause harm call, to me. So right. it's not something you have to apologize to. Because you. I'm just, yeah. you know, you, but you said this. So I'm pissed because <laughs> now, well, fuck, I'm already here. What about me? You know, so it's important. And for, that's for, where, I mean, you just, you break down, you make that as a scenario. But that's where shit, I think, even can get messier or it's been more challenging because that was a plausible thing that's happened almost every day of our life for the past year and a half where I will tell the fellas, mm -hmm. you'll see me at the shop or I'll have a call with somebody or a one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I mean, even Zach, you know, and I, and I, and, and again, Katie would have an episode or something and I would have to can't, I've had to cancel and reschedule huge enrollment calls. It, that alone has been extra challenging and hard when you're already trying to restore your word with people in life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we do yeah. the best we can. Absolutely. And even in those things, communication, communication, communication. It's one thing if I can't, but do they still know my heart in the beginning, the middle and after the fact? And we've all learned. We just had a shop meeting today. It was really just with the apprentices um, and it was heavy. There were tears. Um, there was airing of grievances. It got tough is like we turning the heat up in the kitchen. And if you and it's for like alchemy shit, though, whoever's meant it got gold is going to get through this conversation and come out the other side better. And whoever ain't is not going to make it tight deal. You know, um, it was a tough conversation. You remember last week I said this is the year we cut in the fat. We are committing to handling it now, here and the now, not carrying resentments and rackets and stories about my brother. And if they said or did something that rubbed me sideways and I'm going to carry it and build resentments about him for the two weeks and then finally have the nuts to say something. If ever we tried to a next level annihilate and squash that today. 
by having a real authentic meeting and things don't go perfect shit gets messy welcome to the human experience but where's our hearts where's our intent and as uh, brother deville mentioned if it's not malicious like you say a lot josh uh, our hearts were there for real truth to surface and real authentic communication to happen and even though it was heavy even though it was tough even though there were some breakdowns some he said she said shit we all broke through and what we really did, Josh, was created and cleared new ground for us all to clearly and authentically communicate with one another more often, right in the moment, right when it happens, and giving each other room to do it, even if it was because today we were like, we forced it, and it was uncomfortable, but we got through it together, and that has created an atmosphere conducive for more communication to happen. And boundaries were set. And boundaries were set. Yeah. You know? Uh, I, think, yeah. I think you said the magic word, too. Like, for people like me, for like people like us, we need to understand that it's okay to get uncomfortable. Mm. You, know, you know, ultimately, like, that's, I think, sometimes what I'm dodging a yeah. lot of. And it's okay that... You know, somebody has an opinion of me that I don't agree with uh, and, and to be uncomfortable and to have those conversations to to break through yes. to get to the heart of what's really going Man. on. Um, and I've talked about this with with, you know, when it was just me and Nikki, like the, the some of the best parts of, of our marriages were so good at communicating. Mm. So like 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 most things in life, like it usually is a pretty simple solution. But I think humans just have this tendency mm. to like make things harder for themselves, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So, like, before you, before you got here, Matt, like, you know, Hip had already brought it up. I was like, is it really that easy? Usually it yeah. is. Yeah. You know? you And you and you also usually know the answer. <clears throat> you, you kind of know in the beginning in your heart what, what you need to yeah. do. But you do all these weird convoluted right. things. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And it's like, mm. just deal with it on the front end. Right. And, you know, we're going to talk <laughs> yeah. about that today because people say, like, you, because you bring out uncomfortable in most people, it's human nature. We want to avoid discomfort, right? So if something comes Absolutely. up uncomfortable, I want to say something, but I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I don't even have the energy. I don't even want to do this right now. In the moment, it seems easier to walk away, easier to not communicate, easier to not get uncomfortable. But we realize what it's costing us so much more it, you may have an instant payoff in the moment okay i didn't get uncomfortable and have to push the button as you say hip but we realize the destruction and the harm that it is costing us you know it's the old you know and phil deville brought it up today the uh regret and fear mm -hmm. ounces and tons you know what i'm saying uh that fear weighs ounces regret weighs tons and that's why I love, Josh, that you bring up that it's okay to get uncomfortable. And I'm going to take it a step further and Les Brown it in that it's necessary. Right? It's necessary for us Absolutely. to get uncomfortable. But it's weird because uncomfortability is what ends up breeding comfort. <laughs> like, we got uncomfortable today, mm -hmm. which is going to lead us to getting comfortable together as a team way quicker than if we wouldn't have got uncomfortable first. They go, they lead the very yeah, thing like, we want. The uncomfortable is what will get us there quickest. I'm sorry, Josh, go for it. No, I'm just going to say you're absolutely right. You know, life is messy. People are unpredictable. Like, let's let's get comfortable. Let's make that the New Year's resolution. Yeah. Like, let's get comfortable. I'm sorry, uh, uncomfortable yeah. so we can get comfortable. Come on. Or get yeah. comfortable and uncomfortable. <laughs> Come on. Ability. Yeah, right. Is, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> you guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of old mentor used to say you. to me where he'd be like, I am satisfied with a dissatisfied satisfaction, you know, which would be like, right. Um, yeah. And it's the one foot in gratitude, one foot in desire, willing to be comfortable with getting uncomfortable to get more comfortable only to be willing to be more uncomfortable. It's just a constant mind fuck, but it's like the, that's the, the what, paradigm. Is that, is that an, ex, it's this paradigm example or uh, a maze. Well, or even if it's, there's levels to it, you know what, what I'm saying? Right. You know? Because that there's things you do today, hip, <laughs> that were one time way out of your comfort zone. 
that are comfortable. And I caused you to step out of your comfort zone. You called yourself out of your comfort zone and put did it and put in the reps and it got messy. You got embarrassed. You fell down, mm-hmm. but you kept getting uncomfortable and your willingness to face uncomfortability uh, and even taking L's that turned into lessons now is your comfort zone. And so what do you do now? Now we're being called a little more out of our comfort zone. That's what I mean by levels. And the conversation we had today that was so uncomfortable, if we have more authentic communication and practice actually authentically communicating, what was uncomfortable for people this week to really go to say one another and say what they want to say will hopefully not be so uncomfortable to have to do in the real near future because we're practicing it. That's all I'm at going to levels on the deal. Yeah. Every time you step out of a box, you've just entered a little bit bigger of a box. Come on, man. Then you find the corners of that box. Then you remove yourself out of that one. Now you're in the bigger box. And even like you and and Nikki, Josh, I imagine your guys' level of communication, the authenticity of it and the ability to uh, wherever you're at today, I'm sure is at a greater level than a decade ago. Absolutely. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because because we did the podcast where we talked about how great we were communicating and everything. Yeah. Just like two days ago, we got into a little bit of an argument. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, well, wait a minute, I don't do this. We're, we're perfect at communicating. No, I'm mm. not. I'm absolutely not perfect at communicating. Yeah. I'm getting better yeah. at it. And we've gotten a lot better together. Yeah, at yeah it, brother. But I'll never be perfect yeah. at it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's awesome. But I do, fi- I do find myself listening, communicating, trying to put myself in other people's shoes. Yeah. You know. And we get to keep our power and stay in our power that way. When we get mad and we don't communicate, we don't say it, and we're running stories and rackets and maybe venting to others, we're giving all our power away. We're, we're so disempowered. Half the world's out there reserved removed and cynical on the sidelines, disempowered as fuck, pointing at everybody else, right? And that's the trap we don't want to fall into. That's what's going to cost you, you know? And we're all guilty of it. We just recognize it and don't stay there. And that was the meeting we had today because we were all guilty of falling into not staying in our power and not empowering one another. And so not being empowered to go to one another and there was this division and rackets and stories and resentments. And we called a meeting today when fucking to bring a bulldozer in and annihilate it. And uh, I'm pretty confident that's what happened. But we'll we'll find out <laughs> in the coming days, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Well, that's good. I mean, sometimes you just have to have those heavy conversations for sure. My goodness. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll find myself avoiding them. Yeah. Then you avoid them to the point that it's like, now it's like, now it's weird to bring it back up. Yeah. The situation that happened like two weeks ago right. or something. Right. You know, it's just weird. It well, is. And, and you know, with like boundaries and stuff, at least for me, like when I'm passive aggressive about someone overstepping their boundary and I don't say nothing and say that, uh, Pete, for example, oversteps the boundary with me seven times and I'm fucking furious at Pete. And then Jim shows up the next day and oversteps that same boundary one time. And Jim, if if I would have just been cool and collective and let him know, he would have respected it after that. Well, because I fucking was passive aggressive and didn't get uncomfortable and was people pleasing. Now it's the straw that broke the camel's back. And Jim feels all of my fucking wrath that ain't even for him, you know, be, simply mm-hmm. because I didn't choose to like honor the boundary that I had set with the first guy or the first bunch of people, you know, and I some similar with like my buddy on the phone on the way from here after yeah. Zach passed, yeah. like, yeah. you know, I just, I've never had a converse, uh, uncomfortable conversation with him of like holding him accountable of like how he's on the same road that fucking Zach's on. And he just, you know, I'm fragile and fucking, I know I haven't had these talks with him and it just came out and it came out very hurtful and causing harm, um, which I did, you know, and it's like, it's not fair, but you know, fucking there's times where I've went off on the cash register lady because fucking something someone else did that was a direct responsibility because I didn't honor my own fucking boundary and 
pushed being uncomfortable off and pushed it off. But enough of those incidents has happened and I can grow a little bit because like it takes pain yeah. for me a lot of times, even though I don't have to. I can learn a lot from a dummy. It takes pain for me to change, which is <laughs> I, well, I'm grateful for pain. But at the same time, like fucking replay this in my ear when I'm fucking going through something and I'll tell you to fucking eat a dick, you know? Well, and it's weird too, because I'll tell you when we decide to get uncomfortable and it's kind of like when people say, Hey, oftentimes the fear you had of doing the thing was way greater than actually doing it. Right. And even having the tough conversation, I don't know about you, but even someone even said it, it felt like bricks came off, you know, but we're riddled with bricks having an internal war. Am I gonna fucking, have a real authentic conversation. Am I going to address this or not? Am I going to put some respect on me and have enough respect for them to go to them? And it puts all these bricks on, you know, but when you do talk when just break through that and let ego go, whatever you got to do, the bricks will fall off. It leads to your instant freedom. <clears throat> you know, it's so beautiful. I just want to encourage you guys on the other side. <clears throat> Josh, earlier, I'm just uh, changing gears for a quick second here, was bringing up, he brought up the word social media, right? Um, And in talking about that, it made me realize for whatever reason that, you know, social media was originally created for us to actually have relationships with one another and be social. But social media has just become media lately. And it's almost like lost the social part of it, right? And this is something when we teach, something we flow in. I mean, hip goes out of his way just to bless and acknowledge people all the time just because. So do I. So do all we. A lot of you guardians do that. I just want to challenge you all for no reason at all to get on social media the next time you do and just show 10 different people love on their post and their DMs, whatever, for no reason at all. But even if you're just bouncing out some of the media, being a real person, sending a real message to a real person, just want to remind you to just live. Send 10 people a yeah. thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. And then say from Carl Ted. No, I, uh, <laughs> this is from Carl Ted. <laughs> I, I always really like this saying to, uh, you know, check in on your strong friends, mm. you know, because usually oftentimes they're not as strong as they project, mm. you know? So when it, on those 10 people, it's, you know, who, who seems to always be laughing and who always seems to be okay. Let's check in on them because you'd never really know, mm-hmm. you know, as we've unfortunately Jesus. found out in the past, the hard yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But I, I, I do love to do that though. I'll get online and I'll just kind of be scrolling and, you know, and I'll give somebody a, you know, just nice, nice words on, on work Come or just on. whatever. And, I'd say, I'd say nine times out of ten, it, it comes back and it and it becomes a real mm-hmm. social thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we haven't talked for over a year. Right. Let's not let's not go a year again. Right. Let's let's maintain this friendship. Right. You know, it's not just to book tattoos mm-hmm. or to, you know, push my music on you. Like yeah. this is supposed to actually be social. Yeah, and let's not forget to just keep cheering one another on. If I hit you up and we don't even Absolutely. have to like reconnect sometimes because we all got those friends like just a quick word it's like man you still the fucking saint you was still my motherfucker i could go years and not talk to you but when i do oh you fill my soul up keep fighting the good fight i see you right man yeah i love those friends that you just pick right up yeah you know my friend sean king and i are like that like i talked to him last night it's been several months i haven't seen him in over a year but we we can just pick right back up like it was nothing like it was yesterday Mm -hmm. yeah it's a true friend yeah brother you know yeah Big time. <clears throat> you know, I think we're, you know, for time's sake, to want to be cognizant of everybody's time, but <clears throat> on the topic of boundaries, you know, we go down the rabbit hole on boundaries with yourself. I'm in the process of like rediscovering new ones and creating them every day. The hardest thing for me is to communicate and keep integrity with me. But throughout every season of my life, I've gone in seasons and I've had boundaries with myself. So have you guys, when you've gone on great diets, you created boundaries. I'm no longer doing carbs. I'm no longer eating sugar. Well, that was a boundary with yourself, right? For your diet. And we have those. I have a mentally and spiritually, you know, even if it's boundaries like right when I wake up, 
I've learned that I'm not going to go straight to my phone and read my messages before you can get out of bed. It's going to fuck me up. You know what I'm saying? So I got to set a boundary for myself. Thinking I'm strong. It's a new day. Hit with boom, Let boom, me boom. start answering these thousand text messages. Man. <laughs> you know, wake up to a bunch of people pissed, you know, whatever the case. Um, but, yeah, I think that's important. For, you know, it's one thing for us to discover our boundaries and how we operate in business and with, in our relationships and to clearly convey them. What about your boundaries with you? You know, Um and I remember there are different seasons of my life, whether I'd be fasting. There was a season on my life I went on hiatuses from anything sex related, you know, like created like boundaries for me, whatever season I was in, like spiritually, you know. Um, and I think that's real conducive to one's growth, too. What do you boys think on that? Do you have Stupid. any internal? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think boundaries. Uh, I probably have my own personal boundaries more than I set boundaries for other mm, people, for sure. Yeah, yeah. man. Maybe a part of uh, this new year, our new boundary for ourselves is to make sure we set not only boundaries for ourselves more, but yeah. boundaries for other people as Thank well. Thank you. And I think this whole discussion is pointing <laughs> a direct finger pointer to that they are connected. Mm-hmm. If Josh would have had better boundaries for himself yeah. and his own self worth and his communication when someone said, nah, 50, nah, 150, it, you know, it, now he's got better boundaries for himself. He could, even if that was still um, someone misheard or miscommunication, his self worth would be like, no, I said 150, period. That was already pre decided. Right. That's a boundary. You know what I'm saying? So they're all connected. The more, and I think the goal is for us to love ourselves enough to love our own boundaries for ourselves, for they are not just for us. It's so I can serve you guys to the fullest. And if I have boundaries for myself that are also boundaries for you guys, that's so I can manage my own, not just time, but energy. And you've seen me get my ass handed to me in recent years on that. Mm -hmm. I know the truth is the truth, but like Josh, I don't have the, I'm not perfect at it, but in this where I'm in, in my process, but I realize our boundaries are connected, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even the commitment we made after today's meeting, I even think DeVille and stuff, we all made new boundaries with ourselves, which is I'm not going to hold resentments. I'm going to make a new commitment to go and pull my sister or my brother aside. That's kind of setting a new boundary that I'm not going to talk shit in my head for two weeks before I say something to somebody or even two hours, you know, but anyone that took on that boundary for themselves, it's for all of us. It's going to affect us all, right? They're connected, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And like you said, like if you build it up in your head for two hours, two weeks, you're just forming an opinion, like you're getting angry at this person for no, for no possible reason, right. you know? Yeah. And so then when you do finally come at them, you know, you, you, you kind of come at them sideways, yeah, oh yeah. you know, and that's, and then that, then they're not going to really like take what you're saying. They're, they're already feeling like, well, they're yeah, they're going to mirror your energy. Right? So exactly. Yeah. So then that's not real communication. Right. right. So. Right. Oh, now we know this is big boy and big girl shit, which is weird. Josh said it like it's simple. Why we overcomplicate it? Why can't we just keep it real and have the talk now? Well, we're practicing it, but apparently it's not as easy as it sounds, even though it's simple. Right. Mm-hmm. But well, yeah. when, you, when you live a life where you do you avoid discomfort for so long, Man. you know, yeah. you know, I don't want to put my hands in hot water when I haven't been doing that my whole mm-hmm. life and burn them. But if I need to do that to to grow yeah. and to and to get past something, it's maybe it's done. Yeah. You know. Shout out to all of you who are who have clear, authentic communication, who are mature enough to not carry resentments and just go and communicate to your spouse, to your coworker, to your boss, to your client. This is your life, right? There's no way around it. This thing called communication. My God. But it leads to all of our freedom. And, you know, speaking of communication and boundaries, 
just so our listeners can bear witness to this, we didn't podcast yesterday. Josh got a bunch of new equipment. He was trying to get ready so he can be presented the best quality he can for you guys. And so we did it today. And today's been a full day. It's Zach's birthday. We had to meet his mom at the shop. And um, aunt. And aunt. Yeah. Shout out to, to Sue and Jen. Um, we love you. And um, I have a consultation at five and it's 415 Eastern. And I'm about 45 <clears throat> minutes away from the shop. So I have to honor my boundary to my client. Um, and we have to end the show, guys. <laughs> or you guys don't, but I got to. But I'm communicating. What a perfect I'm, way for boundaries. I'm communicating right. and I'm sticking to my boundary. Josh, is should we just take this time since 2023 to tell Hip we don't even need him to return next week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a, you know, I right? wish you motherfucker. Who told, who told you we need That's you? Right. right? Hey, Deville, <laughs> come here real quick, man. Guys, real quick before we go, I just want to introduce you to one of our brothers, some badass from Aisle Nine. Come on over here and have a seat, brother. You got him sweating bullets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is another king here in the making. This is our good brother Deville. How so you cool. doing? Hey, if I knew I was gonna be on camera, I would have got a lineup and a retwist. Hey, Deville, <laughs> hey, you got <laughs> <right here>. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. How you doing, Deville? It's good to it's good to meet you, man. Oh, here, here, put these in. You oh. can't hear Josh. That in. You got Q tips, right? I was yeah. just saying, how you doing, man? It's good <laughs> to meet you. Good to, see you. <laughs> good to meet you. Yeah, I actually reached out to you like maybe earlier this week or earlier last week just to, you'd have been on my heart heavy and I've been listening to the podcast, just re listening to old episodes and hearing everything you were saying. I just felt it on my heart to reach out to you. So it's good to actually talk I to you in person. Yeah, I appreciate that so much. You know, when people reach out like that, it means so much to me. And oftentimes it's very needed in that moment. So, you know, Matt always says, if you're thinking about somebody, let them know. So thank you so much for doing that. Cause I, I, I know that it, it really made me feel good and I, I needed it. So thank you so much. hundred percent. I needed it too. Cause just who you are and what you do and how you operate is a huge impact on somebody like me who's across the country who I've never even really met you in person but you came and coached a tvm class and it felt like i knew you like right off the bat instantly and it made me feel real good and just listen to the podcast over and over again like the nico episodes and the pooch episodes like, I, awesome. I listen to the pooch episode like at least once a week mm -hmm. and like hearing that's such a good episode dude, one of my favorites. yeah i'm waiting on that part too uh yeah but yeah just who you are and how you operate affects me in such a dramatic way that I have to reach out and show the respect. And like what I brought up about what happened with Zach, you got to give people flowers while they're here or else they'll, know, they'll never know. Mm. Wise words. Absolutely. That's good, man. That's good. I'm sitting over here with my brother here. Hey! <laughs> oh my God, we look crazy as hell, boy! Um, and I'm stuck. I'm stuck. How about you honor our brother Deville? I'm stuck. Here, I'll just stay here. My cousin. My cousin. <laughs> oh, we got it. Okay, thanks. Uh, stay here. Uh, okay, Deville, we fucking honor you, man. I want to thank you for who you are and how you show up, man. And even though, yeah, I'm like dad of the shop and coach and mentor, uh, we've learned you've made us better men. And we learn from you for who you are, how you operate, how you show up in the world. Uh, is is that true? Can I speak for you, Hip, on that and Mike? Uh, I mean, yeah, just for the show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <yep. laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, what's your Instagram, Deville? Uh, it is Deville Pinson. D e v i l l e p i n s o n. Okay, Deville Pinson, brothers and sisters. Uh, this young man's up and coming in the making. Uh, but I wanted you to meet him today and go ahead and show him your love and support, critiques, whatever. Um, he's one of the good ones. We love you, brother. Thank you. I love you guys as well. Yeah. I'll man. get out of your seat. No, you good. <laughs> you want to take us home? You want me to? Yeah. Guardians, we love you. Go ahead, Hip. No, yeah. I'm not as I'm good at the intro. I'm not as good as the <laughs> outro. But I was just going to introduce their new co-host. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Add some color to the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some diversity. Yeah, no shit, man. <laughs> shit. Um, brothers and sisters, well, tattoo guardians from all over the world, let's continue to leave our relationships better than when we found it. Have those tough conversations now. It will lead to your freedom, at least clarity in life. 
Um, we all fall down. It all gets clumsy and messy at times. We just get back up and we own it and we keep moving on and growing together. The only reason why we're still a squad isn't because of our perfect track record. It's because along the way we choose forgiveness. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you next week.